Hello, I'm Sarah with Rainbow Resource Center, and we've got a special guest here with us. This is Kathleen Cotter Lawler with Right Start Math. And if you think you've heard that name Cotter before, where would we know that name? Well, that would be from my mother, Dr. Joan A. Cotter, who is the developer of the Right Start Math program. So I've known her my whole life. She's kind of a big deal. Yep, yeah, pretty she's much. She's kind of a big deal. So I've got a couple questions about the Right Start Math program. One being, you're not straight up grade levels. So how do your levels work? We run the levels, levels A through H. H is still being written, but A would be a kindergarten. It's got a lot of first and some second. B is first grade with a lot of second and some third, and it goes on from there. And we did that intentionally because there's nothing worse than having a child who maybe belongs in fifth grade, and then we put them, give them a book and say, here, honey, here's your second grade work. That doesn't yeah. go very well. No. So we have them in level C because they're cool, or level E because they're excellent. So we go, we base the grades and the levels on where the child is to be placed. What are some of the other features about Right Start Math that make it a little different from other math programs? The big thing that makes it different is we use an abacus to give the children a visual idea of their math so that they can actually play with it and work with it. So it's not just this symbol, they can actually see the, excuse me, the wrong numbers, see if they can get the quantities on there so they can see six rather than the symbol six. And so we use an abacus to give them a visual idea of their math, and then they get to play card games to practice what they've learned. So they're transferring that knowledge from the lesson out of the lesson to a different, in that game, right. practicing, reviewing, and transferring that knowledge. Right. That's really cool. And the games become a reason for the children to want to learn their math facts. Because a lot of times, they don't care about their math facts. But if I'm going to play a game and meet and beat Daddy at the game, yeah. they are all over it. Awesome. And that's why the games are so important. It helps them learn it in a fun way, and it gives them an application for what they're learning. I've seen abacus before, and they always kind of look like toys, and you count, but your abacus has some very specific features. Can you show us that? Our abacus is very different because it's grouped in fives. So if I were to put this many beads on, you can see that you have five and two more. That the recognizing of the quantity seven is actually called subitizing, being able to recognize it. You can see that you have five and two more. So I don't have to count it, it's subitizing. So where this becomes handy, now that you've seen that seven, is if I do four plus three equals, oh, I've seen that before, it's seven. I don't have to count, it's not four plus three, it's um, mm, four, five, six, seven. Wait, what was the question? So I can come back and see it. Subitizing is like taking a little picture. You're, you're translating. Tell me not, more about it's subitizing. Not, it's not so much as taking a picture, it's a recognizing of a quantity. So if I were to hold up this number, you don't have to count it. You can see that it's seven. Mm -hmm. Or if I were to hold up this number, again, you don't count it. You can see that it's four. That's subitizing. That's the recognizing of it. And for we adults, it's like, well, of course, of course we can do that. You'd be surprised at the number of children who don't know that. Okay. So it's the amazing. Blue, the blue and the yellow allows are it allows it to be grouped. So again, if I did this, you can see that you have nine because you can see you have five and four and that there's one left right and that there's one left so a good point go some people will see it and they'll say oh there's 10 minus one is nine both are correct as long as you can recognize the quantity nine without having to count it so one thing about right start is that it's appealing to different different brains almost because you've got the brain that's going to look at this and see the seven at the top and you've got another brain that's going to see the three at the bottom. So you're really mm -hmm. teaching kids that your brain is just fine and you do what works for your brain. And there's different ways to do it. And that's one thing that the Right Start Math program does is it will teach children multiple ways to come up with the same answer. And sometimes that's frustrating for parents because it's like, they got it on Monday, why are we doing it again here? Because I don't know your child, so I'm gonna teach it one way on Monday, another way on Tuesday, and a third way on Wednesday, again, not to confuse the child, but to give them some tools to choose. And your child may look at Monday and go, alrighty, that's interesting. Tuesday, yeah, don't like it. Wednesday, oh, oh, that's awesome. And that's what we want the children to do is to be able to take and find their way of figuring okay. out an answer. Okay. 
And I think that's a lot of really good just cognitive development and learning how your brain learns math mm -hmm. and what makes that math stick in your brain. That's really helpful for a little kid, like a first grader. Exactly. To have that sort yes. of ability is pretty special because right. a lot of adults don't know what makes their brain tick. They just know this is how I learned it and that's what you do. Right. All right. Well, thank you. So one thing that as a consultant at Rainbow we hear about from parents is that they're nervous to try Right Start because they think it's going to just take an hour a day. Oh my gosh, I have to do this, this, <laughs> this, and this. I've got three or four or five kids. How can I, as one person, use Right Start when it's going to take that much time? Right. Good. Very good question. And we do hear that a lot. Well, first of all, the lessons are planned to be about 30 to 45 minutes per day, per child. So if you just have your kindergarten, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, that's not bad. You've also got game time in there and that's included in the lesson. Now, if you want more games when daddy comes home and you want him to play the games with the kids, that would be extra time. But you've only got a half hour, 45 minutes. That's not bad. So to do one child, that's not really a problem. No. But all of a sudden, now I've got, I've got the eight-year-old and the seven-year-old and the six-year-old and I've got the twins hanging around in my ankles. How do I do that now? What we do with that, again, you're still going to be looking at about 30 to 45 minutes per child, but when there's games that need to be played, and that's what we, instead of doing worksheets, now we have worksheets, but you're going to be playing games instead of doing a lot of worksheets, have the olders play with the littles so that the olders are learning, and the, excuse me, the littles are learning and the olders are reinforcing. And that mm -hmm. gives you time to go work with another one of the children or to go take care of the twins or to do what it is that needs to be done. Nothing helps a concept really stick, like teaching it to somebody else. So even though your older students might be really solid in math, they are gonna. They might pick up a new method too. Exactly. With the abacus, and, right? And or such. something they've forgotten just in the back of their mm -hmm. brain. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I see what little sister's doing. I remember yeah. that. And then they can apply that later it's on. It's not. It's not a busy work type thing for the older kids to do it. It's helping them by teaching yes. it to the little kids too. And yes. the games are cool. They're fun, and they're not super time consuming. Some. No. Nope. You could play one in five ten minutes. Absolutely. So. We usually say that ten to fifteen minutes of a game is the same thing as a worksheet. So if your kids want to play a game for an hour, good deal. Well, and given the choice of a worksheet or a game, <laughs> every time they're going to pick the game. They're going to so pick the game. That's yep. a no-brainer. Yep, okay. exactly. Okay. But there is pencil paper work with right Yes, start. there is. Yeah. In level A, you've got, you're going to be doing about, level A is our beginning, you're going to be doing about a worksheet, maybe worksheet or two a week. So not a lot. Very simple. B is going to be a little bit more and they kind of keep building. So by the time you're getting to C, you're maybe doing every two to three days, there's a worksheet. So by the time they get to F, they're going to be doing a worksheet probably four to five times a week. And what age is F again? F is going to be fifth grade with a lot of sixth and some seventh. Okay. So a lot of wiggle room. Yes. And if you do have multiple siblings and multiple grades, with that flexibility, you might even combine a fifth and a, a traditional fifth and sixth exactly. grader. Exactly. Yes. And they're each just going to be working at their own level. Right. So you can put kids Within together. You can group them together. The only thing I caution with that is to watch, and this is for all curriculum, but watch so that, that if you've got two joining together, that that older one isn't being held back or that younger one isn't getting pushed ahead too far. Right. You know, but that's the joy of homeschooling is you're going to know what's best. Right. So there are two editions of Right Start. The first one was around for a long time and it had this thing with the manipulatives where you would you would buy a chunk and then you would buy an add-on and then you would buy a chunk and buy an add-on and it got a little complicated. So one of yes. the changes in the second edition is that you're buying those all in one bundle. You're buying all the manipulatives in one bundle cleverly called the math set. Again, you buy all your manipulatives at one shot so you have that initial investment and then you're going to use those manipulatives for all the kids from A to F. So you're buying the big bundle of materials, the manipulatives, and then you're not adding on until you get up to what level? Level G and H. And so, why are you adding something at that point? Because in G and H, you're gonna use a scientific calculator that you don't use for the first five years. So why purchase it? You mean first it? graders don't need scientific I know, go figure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, all right, I get that. So, okay, so the manipulatives, 
kind of got simplified, streamlined as far as how you purchase them. Right, you purchase them as one kit, it's your initial investment, and then you use it for five years for as many kids as you need it. So if you've got three kids, you're using one bundle, maybe getting each child an abacus, and is there anything else right. each child we should like have? We like to have every child going through the program in the house to each child have an abacus, and depending upon if you're teaching two children at the same level, there's some things you may need to duplicate. Um, and those, those we can kind of deal with that when that time comes. But the big thing is, is to get an abacus for every child in the household. Plus, you kind of want them to just take it in their room and practice with it. Yes. Yeah. And to play card games with it. So when the little okay. one's playing with the older, they're both using the abacus. Okay. So yes. that's their instructional tool. Yes. And then the teacher materials also made some improvements in the second edition, right? Yes. The first edition actually was written in the mid-late 90s and was made available to homeschoolers in 2001. And it was levels A through E. And I have to admit, there are times in that book where you do stuff, but it doesn't really tell you why to do it. it. Basically, we just pat you on the head and say, just do it. Trust me. Trust me. Don't worry about why. In second, and a lot of people are like, why? What? How do I do that? So in second edition, we made a point of saying, here's your activities to teach, and then here's the explanations. Why are you doing this the way you're doing it? What's the research behind it? What if your child's having difficulties? What if they're gifted? And we're gonna have those in there for you. So you don't have to sit there and wonder, why am I doing this? Or what's the reason? Or why am I watching for this? Mm -hmm. We're gonna give you those explanations. So we try to give you as much as possible to help you teach your children the best way possible. So with the second edition, that teacher guide has basically made the program open and go, right? You yes. don't have to study it for no. a week in order to teach the next Monday. You right. are, here's a list of what you're gonna use in this lesson. Here's where to start, do this, then and this, just then this. start reading. So I think it's a lot, a lot more user-friendly for a parent than what they might have realized. I think they see yes. this stuff and they're just scared and a little overwhelmed. Right. And really, it's quite user-friendly, especially that second edition. And it's nice, too, because some curricula will give you some manipulatives, but don't really tell you where to put them in and how to put them in. In the program, both first and second, but specifically the second edition, it says, go get the tiles and tells you what to do with them. Go get the math balance and what to do with them. Go get the fraction chart. Go get the place value and tells you exactly what to do as you're doing it. Okay. It's scripted in that it tells you, show the child this, go all the way through. If we want you to say something specific, it'll say, ask. And then it'll tell you what to say to the child. And if it says something like, ask the child what four plus three is, we'll give you the answer. So you don't have to think about it if you're having a really rough day. So we'll give you that answer, which is nice. Um, which is kind of silly in the first, in, excuse me, in levels A and B. But by the time you get to level F, it's really a lifesaver <sighs> to that. have that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for the parent that's just not real confident in teaching math, mm. do you have some videos or some resources that they can access? We do. So you can go onto our website under teacher support and from there you can find the webinars. But we do have them. We also have a YouTube channel that can be accessed. And those resources are not for the child to watch and then do the assignment. Those are resources for the parent, for the parent to teach the program. This isn't a plop them in front of a computer type math. This is an interactive yes. math. Absolutely. And that is one of the, the detriments, like we mentioned before, that you have to put the time into the children. But that's the point of homeschooling. Is it's that you, kind of the point. Yes. Yeah. So you need to put that time into it. And again, you're not going to be putting in hours of math every day, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. But again, there will not be a video for children because a video cannot look at your child and see if they're getting it or not. Whereas right. you as the parent can look and go, ooh, she's got it. Or wow, okay, we need to back that up. You apparently didn't get what I was saying mm -hmm. and work it from there. Which brings up assessments to see if your kids are understanding. So the games would be kind of an informal assessment. You can check if they're understanding, like yes. multiplication. But there are also exams. If you need to document things. Yes. All the levels, A through H, have a first quarter, second quarter, and a final test. They do not have a third year or third quarter test. And the reason for that is, is because that's when a lot of state testing is happening. So we didn't want these kids to be overwhelmed. So there's a first quarter, second quarter, and final test in every book. 
in level C, D, E, F, there is review and games that you can have be kind of semi, what would the word be? Well, you um, can use those as an informal assessment yes, as well, right? A right. review. You could, if you have They're to document. They're kind of like chapter tests. Yeah, if you have to document tests for your state, you can use those as test scores, no Absolutely. problem. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. And I, I really like that the final exam is cumulative. Yes. I think that's a great yes. way to just check, you know, have they been able to apply this knowledge all through the school year? Absolutely. Because it's not that they, you know, learned it in August and then didn't see it again until May. They've been using this all along. So I think that's a really valuable thing. Yes. Kathleen, thank you. Thank well, you for thank coming you. and training us thank consultants. We right. sure appreciate it. That Absolutely. helps us be more valuable to our homeschool customers. Yeah. Thank so, you, Sarah. Thank thanks. you for having me.